Have you ever heard the Aristotle quote that goes, the more you know, the more you realize you don't know? I think that really fits with Destiny 2 because there's a lot of content in this game, especially with its roadmap that was just announced for the next couple years. So I want to make this quick guide for returning and brand new players to the Destiny universe. Myself, I'm a returning player. I haven't touched any of the expansions. So I just wanted to make this clear that this is just going to be a base level just so you have a working knowledge and it's not so intimidating to jump into the game. Because when you create a brand new guardian, it can be very overwhelming to where to start and to see what to do first. So we we'll go over a few terms of the games. Obviously not everything because this game has a lot of deep lore within it. But first off, let's start off with, if you're not sure what Destiny is, it is an MMO, RPG, FPS. It covers every letter of the alphabet, basically. But needless to say, it's a shared world, first person shooter where you grind to get new gear and level up your loot. Think Borderlands, Art of the Division. So when you start up Destiny New Light, you'll be able to create a new Guardian. You have three classes to choose from. You have a Titan, a Hunter, and a Warlock. I wouldn't fret too much over these. You could look into the subclasses, which is within each class, and that only affects your special abilities within the game. So generally, your moment-to-moment -moment gameplay is going to be your first-person shooter. It's not going to change that much from the class. Obviously, you can look up to see which one is, but my recommendation is to jump in, go with the Titan. Probably that's the kind of the generic warrior class that most people choose. But generally, the moment-to-moment -moment gameplay is going to be the same. And if you really get hardcore into the game, you're probably going to create each class anyways. So don't fret too much over this decision. Each Guardian starts out with a power level of 750 now. And you can see this when you go to your character screen. And that's the most, I guess, important number of your Guardian. Because that shows how strong your gear is and opens up new content for you if you hit a recommended power level. And how you get this level higher is to get gear throughout the game everything in this game from your helmet to your to your chest armor to your leg armor and your weapons goes into your power level so you're going to be switching out guns and armor kind of frequently throughout the game but it's not like borderlands where you're getting loot left and right as you complete a mission it'll actually give you the loot and it'll show up on the right side of your screen and the most rare loot in the game is called exotics which are yellow or gold and that's kind of the main gear that most people will go for so the free-to-play version of Destiny is called Destiny New Light. And in this version, you get the original game, which is called The Red War, and the first two expansions, which is Warmind and the Curse of Osiris. And once you finish the first intro missions and cutscenes, or whatever it has you go through, and you're able to travel, you want to go to the tower and talk to Amanda Holiday here on the right. And she holds these uh, all-day free content story missions which is called the legacy content so you will activate that content and then now you'll see it in your quest menu down at the bottom this is the main pve or player versus environment component of destiny and when you go to the destinations after you track a mission you will see that there are logos all over the place and the logos are very important within the world of destiny obviously you can just go in and follow the green tracker from mission to mission but you also want to learn what each logo is because then you can quickly discern which one is important to you at that time and which one can be ignored for later sometimes to activate these missions you could do it from the map by clicking it and then launching it from there but also having to physically go to a spot within the map and when you're traveling through the mmo open world and you see the other guardians jumping around you might also run into these other symbols these are adventures patrols and public events the adventures and patrols you can look at kind of being mini side missions something that you can complete while you're right there in the world you see with adventures you can go to a little room somewhere on the map and have to defeat some enemy enemies in a patrol you have to defeat enemies in the open world and collect some gear that they drop the public events happening pretty constantly in the open world of destiny and sometimes you join them without even wanting to and sometimes you join them purposely but all you have to do usually is to be in a certain location or to engage an enemy that is part of the public events and usually these are just a horde mode where you have to stand in one spot and control it or defeat all the enemies you may also see logos are the word shadow keep and forsaken on some missions are some content that you see and shadow keep and forsaken are the two newest expansions that have already been released for destiny 2 if you're ever unsure of what something is, curse over it or highlight it 
on the console and it gives you a lot of good information on there. Destiny does a really great job of explaining what something is and what needs to be done um, over the map of the world. Don't get me wrong, there's a lot of discovery and secrets within the game where you have to might do something, um, one mission to lead into another, and there's obviously a lot of guides online to do that. But if you're a new player and you're not sure what something is, just hover over it and it'll tell you what it is. If you see something that says Beyond Light, that's what all the new announcement was for Destiny, and that's the upcoming content over the next couple years. Destiny also has Seasons, and this is their Battle Pass type content for the game. Currently, you're in, we are in the season of Arrivals, Arrival for Destiny. So if you ever see anything that says Season of something, that is what the current season is right now, our season in the past you may hear one season was better than the other or, or vice versa and that's just something you could kind of compartmentalize all this content because there's a lot going on with this game but season just think of it as a battle pass and you could go into it and there's some free content with it as well and really quickly let's jump into the player versus player or pvp of destiny so this is also accessed from the destinations map and it's across the bottom you have the crucible trials and gambit Crucible is your main PvP content of mini miniature maps, think Call of Duty, not miniature, but smaller maps, think Call of Duty, Team Deathmatch, Control, it has different names within Destiny, but that's what that game mode is. And then there's also Gambit, which is actually something that's new to me as a returning player, which is kind of player versus player versus environment, where you have to take kill enemies, return them, uh, return loot that they drop to a central point, but you're going up against another team which can invade your game and slow you down. And lastly, let's talk about the end game content. This is Strikes, Dungeons, and Rage. These are the most difficult challenges that Destiny has to offer. And these are usually the things you see when there's this first, this team beat this first raid, or yada yada yada, they set a world record or something like that. Usually makes some headlines. But Strikes are the simplest of the end game content. You'll see them on the map. You can click them and go to them and launch them. These have matchmaking. Usually, I my experience, it's not as popular. Sometimes they do the nightfall strikes and things like that, which are kind of timed challenges within that are just type of strikes. But think of strike as a more difficult story mission, but easiest of the end game content. Uh, the next up in between strike and raid is dungeons. And this is the newest uh, end game content. This is actually new to me as a returning player also. These have been explained to me as harder strikes and easier raids. So obviously they fall somewhere in between a strike and a raid. But dungeons, right now we got a free one with the new um, announcement and everything. I think your power level has to be very high, your player. Um, power level has to be very very high as a new player I wouldn't worry about dungeons right now Especially if you're playing the free one because the other two dungeons are also tied to paid expansions And lastly we have raids which are the ultimate challenge of destiny 2 But again as a free-to-play player I am not worried as a solo free-to-play player. I am not worried about raids. It's the ultimate um, Challenge within destiny 2, but it's also requires six players and there's no matchmaking if you get to the point where you are ready to do a raid you're actually going to be beyond this video obviously because you're going to know a lot the game you're going to be grinding out and you're going to know exactly what you want to do and the gear you want all right ggs everybody thanks for watching that's all i got i hope this helped with destiny 2 with new players and returning players don't be afraid just to jump in and go for it I, destiny is a great game it's triple a content at free to play price so it's nothing to complain about so ggs everybody like share and subscribe if you enjoyed the video and i'll see you in the next one